current methods for sequencing DNA are limited in the length of the read. Uh, so if it's an enzyme that's copying DNA, um, in the absence of all the proofreading machinery that's in a cell, it eventually skips a base, starts to accumulate errors, and so on. So uh, realizing that it would be very nice, A, to sequence very long runs of DNA, um, and B, to do it without all the sample preparation and preparation of libraries and so on that are required for other methods, some years ago, uh, a number of researchers proposed techniques where DNA is threaded through a tiny orifice. And the idea was perhaps you could get a whole single molecule genome, <clears throat> so one piece of DNA from one cell, as opposed to many millions and billions of pieces of DNA copied from cells, to pass through a little hole. <clears throat> and the original idea was that somehow, maybe if you drove it through with an iron current, so you put it in salt and put a battery across it, the DNA is negatively charged, it'll go to the positive terminal of the battery, and the um, ions that flow through the hole with it will be blocked, more blocked or less blocked as each base goes through. That was the original proposal. Well, it turned out that the, um, that sort of worked, but it detected, it sort of averaged over quite a large number of bases in the little hole. So the techniques made amazing strides. It's gone a lot further than a lot of people thought it would, but it's still a way off sequencing at the level of reading single bases. What we did know, do know, is that you can't uh, have electrons tunnel through a molecule unless you hold the molecule down. You've got to torture it. You've got to fix it in place. You've got to put electrodes on it. So if you have your two electrodes here, and the DNA is wiggling around like this, and they're water molecules and ions, you'll, you'll, average, you'll average nothing. You'll come out to nothing. But if you can trap the molecules transiently in the gap, uh, then you can get a read. So our proposal was, rather than tunneling between a pair of metal electrodes as the DNA passes through this way, um, you put chemical reagents that specifically recognize and form hydrogen bonds with the bases, so that every time a base goes into this region, it gets chemically trapped for a little while, and that completes an electronic circuit from one electrode to the next. So we've done a number of measurements that demonstrate the operation of this in principle, uh, but never in a way that is practical uh, for sequencing. There are all sorts of complications about our approach. And the bottom line is now we've worked out an extremely simple way of making uh, bonds with actually all four bases and, in fact, recognizing quite distinctly a very important variation of one of the bases that has to do with how cells specialize and differentiate. And we can do this all with just one reagent on, on the two electrodes. And so it's, it looks very promising. But we have to put all of this together and demonstrate it working on real DNA. That to me, the important thing is that we now know that we can read single bases with tunneling and get a high degree of discrimination. And the reason this is important is that whatever the errors in this system, and there are errors, it's not 100% perfect, of course, but whatever the errors, they are the same whether you are on the first base or the millionth base. Whereas in other schemes for DNA sequencing, the errors in reads are cumulative. They get worse the longer the read. So, you know, if we're lucky enough and Mother Nature lets us put extraordinarily long pieces of DNA through a nanopore, then you would have reads of a whole fraction of a genome uh, without having to assemble anything on a computer.